Welcome to ESPN's College Football Saturday Night, presented by the United States Postal Service. Tonight, the number 15th-ranked LSU Tigers take on number 16, the Florida Gators. You take on the Gators, you take on number eight. It's been somewhat of a rocky start this year for Rex Grossman, the youngster out of Indiana, 19 of 44, four interceptions in last week's loss against Ole Miss. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin along with Mike Godfrey. And Mike, probably the thing that I would be most concerned about if I'm Ron Zook and, and the staff, Rex is getting hit and getting hit a lot this year. I'm not sure he can last the season if this continues. Ron, he's, had, he's thrown 10 touchdown passes, 10 interceptions, but he gets hit an awful lot in every football game. He's working behind an inexperienced offensive line, and he takes a lot of shots. And when you take shots like Rex Grossman's taken, then in late in the third quarter, in the fourth quarter, when you got to make plays, he can't make those plays because he's wore down. And tonight he's going against the number one defense in the land. Third season at LSU, Nick Saban, possibly the best coaching job in America last year. He brought him back after losing to Ole Miss. They didn't lose again. And across the way in his first season, probably as pressure-packed a situation as you could have, trying to replace the legend in Steve Spurrier, Ron Zook. He's 4-2 and two here in his first season. Florida has won the toss, and they have deferred. So it'll be LSU going on offense for the first series tonight. Petrovich will kick it off for the Florida Gators. As you take a look at the weather, very, very humid here tonight. At least the breeze has finally kicked up, and I hope it will continue because it's going to be very warm on these players tonight. And you look at the series history, the last win here in Gainesville, 86. But, Mike, I'll never forget that game in 97 in Baton Rouge when the Gators came in ranked number one, and LSU toppled them there in Baton Rouge. Petrovich with a kick. This one is returnable. Davis from the goal line. He will not get back to the 15-yard line. And this is a very aroused Florida Gator fan group here tonight. So we get to see the youngster from Jasper, Indiana. And Mike, it's not often you get to say this. A battle of two Indiana quarterbacks tonight. And Ron, as... I, I like Matt Mock, Ron. Uh, I watched some tape on him of last week's ball game, and he's throwing the ball a lot better than everybody gives him credit for. Was a professional baseball player. Was going to go to Michigan State. Drafted by the Cubs, went and played in the Cubs organization. A 24-year-old rookie starter. Throws his first pass, had to complete. Going to be a, a short game. I'm going to say about three yards. Thrown to Solomon Lee, and here are the starting lineups. Davis, the tailback. Solomon Lee, who just caught the ball. Myers and Clayton, dangerous on the outside. Eric Edwards is the tight end, more of a blocker. And the offensive line, this is a solid group. They like the left side as far as running behind Whitworth and Peterman. Whitworth, a redshirt freshman out of West Monroe. today this first carry for him at the night he'll barrel his way out over the 20 yard line to the 21 and here are the starters on defense for the Florida Gators McCray Scott Mitchell on the right side the linebackers well they moved Hardeman to the middle and it really has made a difference the veteran Mateel is the strong side linebacker and then the secondary Cromarty and Ratliff they could have their hands full if that front seven doesn't get some pressure on Mock tonight from the shotgun Mock kind of stared his receiver down now gonna run throws it deep across the middle and it's too far behind the intended receiver Edwards the tight end heavy pressure by Bobby McCray and also Mateel John Thompson the defensive coordinator for Florida said they got to stop Dominic Davis and they got to contain Michael Clayton the wide receiver that's the job they have to do to win this football game Ratliff is the deep man as you look at Donnie Jones a junior out of Baton Rouge 22 punts an average of 41 at his longest, 56. He's got a slight breeze at his back. Here's the left footer's boot. Wobbly spiral. But a bound at the 40 and taken by Ratliff at the 33. 
the 50. Wow, he is unloaded upon at that juncture. But they'll have great field position to take the football for the first time tonight. Rex Grossman, he is out of Bloomington, Indiana. The junior, 6'1", 215 pounds. And as we said last week against Ole Miss, Florida was shut out in the second half, and he tossed four interceptions in that ball game. Talking to the coaches, and Ron Zook in particular, they said he's had a great work week in practice. They expect him to bounce back strong. Tough kid, and he goes without saying, he is a winner. Ernest Graham. Going to have five yards, six and seven as he'll take it off the left side. And here are the offensive starters. Graham, you just saw. Jacobs and Perez, two of six wide receivers we'll see this evening. Aaron Walker, the tight end, primarily a blocker. And up front, this could be the biggest problem. Shannon Snell unable to start at left guard. DeGory moves from center to left guard. And Jorgensen goes over to center. We'll have to keep an eye and see if LSU puts somebody on his nose tonight. Speaking of Jorgensen, that could create some problems for Florida. On first down, short drop, quick pass, incomplete. Looking for Aaron Walker, the tight end, and they rarely throw to the tight ends. Here are the defenders, Spear, Allen, Labelle, and Hill. The linebackers, boy, number 11 in the uh, in the middle, Brady James out of West Monroe. We'll call his name a lot tonight. He is an awfully good one. And then the secondary, Gay and Hookfin. They could have their hands full tonight. Here's a good look at Brady. The defensive captain and leader on that defensive unit. Third down, and Florida needs to take it to the 38-and-a-half-yard line. LSU fakes blitz. They stay at home. Pass right over the middle. Got it complete. 35. Still on his feet. Taylor Jacobs. And he's going to be corralled at the 29-yard line. It's a gain of 14. Webster finally put a stop on him. Taylor Jacobs just running and underneath. Coming across the middle. Let's it clear out. Gets the ball from Rex Grossman. Picks up the first down and keeps the drive alive. So they'll go from the shotgun and now whistles on the field. Timeout, LSU. That is their first timeout of this half. So LSU calls a timeout. And with 12.06 left to play in his opening quarter, we'll be right back with more from Gainesville. Welcome back to the Swamp. By the way, first time LSU has allowed a third down conversion in the last 26 attempts at last play just a moment ago. They go with a running play, almost like a Statue of Liberty to Carthon. And it's going to go for very short yardage. He is knocked down, in fact, at the line of scrimmage. Tackled by Marcus Spears. Ron, Marcus Spears is a great high school basketball player, great high school football player. Shows you his ability on that play. It looked like Carthon was going to get the corner, but Marcus Spear cut him off. Second down, it was a gain of about a half yard. Early going in the first quarter, LSU 1-2-3 and out. And now the Gators on offense for the first time. And after that kick return, it is a great situation to take it over inside the opponent's 50. Pitch comes back, Graham caught with a head-high tackle, ran right out of his shoe, and Marquise Hill is the man that was in hot pursuit. A fumble on that football. Option play, Rex Grossman coming down, kicking the ball to Ernest Graham, and LSU runs very well. Ball came out, but after he was down. You could also see number 11, Brady James. We talked about how much you would see him around the football tonight. He was there to help as well. I talked to Ernest Graham before the game. He said his ankle is still bothering him, but uh, he's a warrior. He's not going to come out of that lineup. They have been using Carthon more because of that injury to Graham. Also, we could see Willie Green tonight. Third down. They need to take it to the 20. Deep over the middle. Got a man and just over through Jacobs. Boy, Taylor was there. The senior out of Monticello had him on a post route and just overthrew it a bit. And again, he had pressure on him. It's a good call, though, by Ed Zombrecker because he kept everybody in and blocked. Still had Taylor Jacobs open on the post, and Rex Grossman just couldn't get it to him. Not going to see him miss many like that. Here comes a field goal attempt that will be placed down at the 32. So a 42-yard attempt by Leach. 
His longest, 41. Good pass. Ball is down. It's a fake. Got a man wide open at the 10 yard line. Carthon and he overthrew it. I mean, Carthon looked like the first guy out to the workout. Well, you got to throw that and you got to put air under the football and let him run in it. Don't under it. Don't overthrow him. He had a sure touchdown and just threw it away. Jeff Whitaker on the pass. Trying to get the ball to Carthon and just overthrew it. That's, that was six points. He was so wide open. Look at Ron. <laughs> Sure, across the way. Fumble of the snap. Mock gets right back on the football. I'm sure on the far sideline that the, there were some deep breaths being taken over there because they could see Carthon breaking open on the fake field goal attempt. Ron, when you come off that old Miss game that they had last week and everything was a downer and they lost that football game. They need something good to happen to them because they're still basically a young football team under a new coach. Three wide receivers come to the left at the bottom of your screen. Mock sets the throw and he swings it out to his back. And across the 26 and now a flag comes in as Davis caught the ball and then defensively some quick help from Cromarty and his friends. Could be a hold or block in the back on Eric Edwards. Holding LSU. Yeah, Eric Edwards was out front of that little screen pass and got caught holding on Bam Hardman, the middle linebacker. Here's the play. Here's what the official saw and called the holding on Edwards, number 47. Well, as so we mentioned in the lineup, the uh, the tight ends for LSU have been primarily blockers. The whole group together has only caught three passes this year. And they, they've always had a tight end to catch the football. Royal, also uh, DiMaggio, they've had some big targets third down flag comes in late pass right over the middle and that goes to the tight end Edwards and he fights his way to around the 32 maybe the 33 they heard you that's right <laughs> it always happens doesn't it <laughs> Jimbo Fisher the offensive coordinator must have heard you say they only thrown three to him uh, so they get him with fourth so a motion penalty against LSU Nick Saban, a little frustrated right now. Somewhat of a rocky start here for uh, for his offensive team. He's got to find a way to slow Florida's speed down. Florida's very fast on defense. Got to neutralize the speed. Talking to Ron Zook the other day, he said they gave up 30 points to Kentucky in special teams, so they want to be better in special teams tonight. Isn't it amazing that they gave up that many points and still won the ball? Yeah, and, they, and they gave up seven already here because they had a sure touchdown on that fake field goal. Boy, did they ever. Jones with his second punt. This is a better kick. It is a line drive and returnable. This is Ratliff on the 24. Runs into his own man. And then caught, nope, not caught from behind. One flag, two flags. And he'll be stopped at the 43. Lejeune is the man who was there to make the tackle. <laughs> 43 on the kick and 19 on the return. So in the early going on this one, it has uh, been mistake filled yeah, by both ball clubs. Sloppy. But when you come off an old Miss game uh, like Florida has done, you need a win here in your own home ballpark. Now, 
Nick Saban on the other side of the field saw Auburn lose today. So uh, he's got a chance to take a step forward in the West. Houston Nunn and his staff getting their first conference win after a tough loss in a six overtime game up in Knoxville last week. Well, you got to tell, you got to say uh, a job well done uh, to, to that coaching staff because that team had a roller coaster ride last Saturday and came back and, and won a big ball game against the Cadillac. With the tally at over 200 yards today, Jones played extremely Jones played well. Really well. Board again with good field position. Play action by Grossman. Swings it out here and has it complete to Troop, who's tied in. And that'll be a short game. Tackled by Lionel Turner. Pushed out of bounds, actually. That's Ben Troop's uh, sixth catch of the year. He also alternates behind Aaron Walker, who I think is one of the best tight ends in the country. He is a good-looking prospect at 6'6", 261 pounds. And he can run. him in practice on Thursday and uh, he you're right he doesn't run like a large fellow second down this is Graham he'll turn it up put a shoulder down and he'll fight forward that'll be enough for the first down well I take that back they have spotted him down saying his knee touched he's going to be very close at around the 42 and a half Randall Gay defensively Ernest Graham is averaging 87 yards rushing in each game this year Lowers his head, gives his shoulder right to Rando Gay. May have got a bad spot. But a tough runner. And uh, when you talk to his coaches, Ed Zombrecker says he's a quiet warrior and he'll tell us his ankle's fine. We know it's hurting him, but he's <laughs> not coming out. He's a very stockily built young man. 5'9", 215. And Florida now calls a timeout, so we'll take a break at 7.57. Left of the opening quarter, still no score. So welcome back. Uh, as you can see, a really excited crowd here tonight. They uh, they like Saturday nights in the swamp, and uh, they get their hands full tonight with this defense of LSU. Though, Mike, this is a great test. I think we're looking at a possible low-scoring game, which favors LSU if they can keep it low. They go with the running play. Graham gets by one tackle. Cannot turn the corner, though, but he'll have the first down. And I'll tell you, that is a tough yard as Lawrence got outside along with Damian James, a senior out of Karen Crow. Schnell had come in as a blocker. And also Willie Green, the sophomore out of Kissimmee, had been in the backfield on that play. Grossman from the shotgun as they work quickly on offense. Rolls the pocket, throws this one, and it's intercepted by Corey Webster. Said to be by the coaches their best cover guy. He was a wide receiver, a junior out of Thackeray, Louisiana, and he gets the pickoff. Ron, anytime you roll your quarterback, you're going to shorten the field a little bit. They're trying to get the ball to Taylor Jacobs. I'm not so sure Corey Webster didn't roll up into this coverage and made a good interception on that football. Third interception by Webster this year, and it's the fifth pickoff in the last five quarters by Rex Grossman. I keep thinking about Michael Clayton. This would be a good time to try him out. You go on top of him, and he's number, turnover, yep. he's number 14. Yep. They go with the running play, though. Wow, hit in the backfield. Bouncing off is Adai. And he'll get it to the 49-yard line. Let's check with Reese. All right, Ron, elsewhere in the SEC. Boy, you know what? Kentucky not eligible for the conference championship game because of probation, but they're playing great football. Against South Carolina, the battleship Lorenzen, the Tommy Cook, his 11th straight completion, cats up by 10 at the half. Michael, I said last week, got to keep an eye on that Kentucky team. And they're at home tonight against South Carolina. Now a 10 to nothing lead. Buck sets deep in the pocket. Here comes the pressure. Going to run. 50, 45. Gets what he can. It goes down at the 42 and a half yard line. Hartman was there to make the tackle on him. That's the other thing John Thompson, the defensive coordinator, talked about to us uh, yesterday when he said he's worried about Matt Mock more than throwing the football, scrambling and running the football because he's such a good athlete. You know, Mike, it's interesting. 
I got a chance to talk with him on Wednesday on the phone. He said in high school, third baseman and a center fieldman, center fielder, and they wanted to make me a catcher. <laughs> he has really good mobility, though. The short-term a catcher didn't hurt him. No, he's a good pitcher in high school. There's the pass right over the middle. Got that one to Clayton, and Clayton will go inside the 25, and he's finally tackled at the 21 as Bailey makes the stop, but it's a gain of 22 yards on the play. Yeah, this is, uh, I think, the second best receiver in the country beside, behind Rodgers of Michigan State, Michael Clayton. Had Josh Reed here last year, so he didn't get a lot of double teams. Getting a little bit more this year with Reed playing in pro football. Solomon, Lee, and Joseph Adai in the backfield. Adai, right side, oh, he's hammered low. Nice tackle at the line of scrimmage. That was Natil that submarined him and made the stop at the 20, maybe a gain of one. Adai, an interesting story, Mike. He, they list him as a fullback. He plays tailback, but he was an option quarterback in high school at Sharpstown in Houston. Again, I was talking to the coaches of LSU. They say he will get exactly the same amount of plays that Tofield would have gotten if he was here tonight. They like him. Yep, Played they him a little bit of fullback. He's a track star in high school also. No gain in the play. They'll roll the pocket. Mock throws back to Edwards, the tight end, and it was a little high, and he fell down. Wow. If that one is thrown lower because of the flow coming to the open side of the field, that could have been big. Remember I said there's got to be a way to slow down this Florida defense because they got so much speed. This is a way of slowing them down, a screen to the back side. But Matt Mock just threw the ball too high to Eric Edwards. Couldn't bring it in. But you could see that Florida did react to it very quickly, though. It had people outside as Mock got punished after throwing the football by Natil. Here comes third down. They need to take it to the Gator 11-yard line. They're working with Natil on the mill near sideline, looking as though he might have banged up his left knee. Mock right over the middle. Got a man in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Clayton. And it was Cromarty who got a hand on it and caused that ball to come out and hit the turf. Matt Mock trying to get the ball to Michael Clayton, but very good coverage by Cromarty. Matt Mock may have stared down Michael Clayton a little bit too long on that play and gave Cromarty a chance to break on that football. Corbello with a 37-yard field goal attempt. High pass, they get it down, plenty of distance, and he's got it. So we'll take a timeout as LSU goes on top. 4.54 remaining, it's 3-0 to nothing Tigers. The Gainesville concern in Gatorland this week that the fun and gun offense is fun and gone. QB Rex Grossman taking a lot of heat, but he really stood up this week, guys, and handled it like a true leader. Predicted a big game for himself, but also admitted, hey, I need to do a better job getting our team out of bad plays at the line of scrimmage, adjusting some of our blocking schemes, and finding and hitting that open receiver. Some have even gone as far as to say that the Florida offense is getting, dare we say, predictable. So look for a new wrinkle probably on this series as they try and get their tight ends more involved this week. Ron, their tight ends have all of three receptions in their last three games. Ron, I, I look at this offense. They, they were moving the ball and uh, Rex Grossman made a bad throw on that play. So I, I still think this is a pretty good offense. They just need to get everything together. Here's the kick at the two-yard line. Uh, Rand Carthen. Out over the 30 to about the 32-yard line. Here's a reminder. It's a Sunday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern. Coverage begins with NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite at 7.30 Eastern. It's an AFC showdown. Ricky Williams and the Miami Dolphins head west to take on Brian Greasy and the Denver Broncos. Don't miss Sunday Night uh, NFL Football beginning at 7.30. Ron, do you realize I watch every Denver game because Marcy is a Bronco fan, been a Bronco fan, my daughter, but she likes Ed McCaffrey, and uh, he had six catches last week, 113 yards. She likes the right guy oh, here. He's a steady player. <laughs> he really is. Graham and Carthon lining up in the backfield this time. They got to find a way to run the football. Well, they fake it to Graham. Sets, now delivers, got a man open, and he overthrows Taylor Jacobs. Yeah. 
When you look at Rex Grossman this year, six games, and, and again, uh, stats are deceiving sometimes. In 2001, he had 22 touchdowns, seven interceptions. He's 10 and 10 right now. But the offensive line of Florida is the problem, and uh, they don't allow you to do a lot of things. Well, the youth up there certainly has been a problem. Jorgensen having to go with center tonight. Begori moves over to left guard. He normally is the anchor guy in the middle. There's a good example right there. Penetration by LSU. Brady James and Lionel Turner getting the penetration. And I don't care how good a back you are or a quarterback, can't get much done when uh, when you're leaking like a sieve. And that's what they did on this play right here. And Look. Ron, you're going to see just a, a, a missed block. And I saw so many missed blocks the other day when I was watching tape. And that was Lionel Turner came through number 58, Scott Free. Third down, and they need about 11 yards to pick up the first. LSU showing blitz, and they come off of it. You see Brady James in the middle signaling. Come off what they had called, and they'll go with a rush for the four down lineman. Pass to the near sideline, intercepted by Corey Webster, his second. He gets a block, and he's going to take it in. He will score. interceptions in his last five quarters. And Ron, what happens a lot of times when an offense sees a defense should check out, what LSU did on that play was bait them into that checkoff. And then they bailed out of what they were going to do. 45 yards on the return. Corbello knocks home the extra point. Mike, take a look at it one more time. Well, you, your observation is right on. They did. They baited him right into it. Baited him into the touchdown interception by Corey Webster. He's having a career night. Quiet crowd. Ten to nothing. Tigers. Ron, here's what Rex Grossman sees. He thinks it's man free, and all of a sudden, Prasso, he's going to get Taylor Jacobs on a deep route. But all of a sudden, you see, all of a sudden, LSU... All the hands up, now they back off. So now they're playing a deep zone. Now you're throwing the deep route into a deep zone. He's wide open uh, for the interception. So they baited them into a call where they thought it was going to be a blitz, and they, they had the fade. Well, this kickoff is going to go five yards deep into the end zone, and the Gators will come back out on offense, uh, and uh, they'll take it over at the 20. Reese Davis has checked with you. Well, another team that was in a big hole, USC against Cal. It was 21-3. Carson Palmer threw a touchdown pass, make it 21-10, then he threw another. This one to Mike Williams, the freshman, the big fella, breaking tackles and scoring, and Trojans getting back in in 21-17. Texas Tech, Iowa State, a little defense being played. They're about to go to the half. Nothing on the board but field goals so far. All righty. Hey, what, the, uh, the Pac-10... The opposite of what happened last year. They're playing Matador defense again, Mike. <laughs> yeah, with a red uh, tower or whatever. I'll tell you what, it's uh, they are scoring a lot of points, and I don't think it's just necessarily strong offenses. Lack of defense. Carthon. And nothing to the left. He'll bounce it out to the right. Hit first by Marcus Spears. And the home folks are getting a little bit restless here. Well, they they could become a lynch mob here uh, before long, but uh, they they got to have patience. This is a as I, I said before, this ball club, when you look at this offensive line, everything starts with this, and uh, they have to do a better job to give Rex Grossman some time. But his two errant throws have really uh, hurt this team tonight. Under three minutes to play, opening quarter. Grossman from the shotgun. Gets out of bounds, and he'll lose yardage on that one. Marcus Spears again with pressure. And you can hear a smattering of boos coming from the crowd. It's going to be a third down and very long. And you know, Mike, we, we talk, we use the term all the time, but it is so true. When you play behind the chains constantly, and you're playing a defense that is ranked number one in the nation, 
wow, you're just sticking your chin out and asking to get it knocked off, aren't you? Yeah, and, you, and, and again, two mistakes have given uh, 10 points away, and you blow a chance when you had the fake field go wide open for the touchdown. So things have not gone well for him in the first quarter. Third down, we'll call it a dozen. Safety blitz coming from uh, deep, and he'll stay with it. They pick him up. Pressure on Grossman right over the middle, and Jacobs drops it. Jacobs was coming back to make the catch, and aesthetically it might have left a little bit to be desired, but it would have been a first down. Ron, if they pick up one block, Ray Carthen picks up this block right here. They get this pass off, and they get the first down. That's Randall Gay. Not too sure he didn't get a little bit of that no, uh, ball. Yeah, then in the missed block, and that's what I say. They're like a typewriter right now. When the offensive line gets a block, then Carthon misses his. Here's the punt, wobbly spiral. On the run at the 50, catch is made by Davis. And Davis still on his feet. Curtains the man, 35, inside the 30. And look at this field position. Well, they're going to lose it. There's two flags back at the 44-yard line. And this one's going to come back. LSU is going to scrimmage still with very good field position. Ron, I thought I saw a block in the back by number 27. 33 on the kick and 23 on the return. Eric Alexander. And again, still LSU with good field position. As you see him come down the football field, there's a the block in the back. Which opened Dominic Davis, who, who doesn't need a block in the back. He's one of the best punt returners in the country. Yep. So, the ball has moved back to the 46. Goes without saying, still outstanding field position for Matt Mock and the LSU offensive team. is up asking the defense to do a job, get the football back. Ricky Robinson in motion, but they go with Davis, and Dominic taking it to the right side will be held to a two-yard gain. For those of you who do not follow LSU on a regular basis, Brandon Tofield, who has been the starter, but yet split time with Davis, who just carried it, but a great one-two combination. Tofield, the power runner who has the ability to break it. Davis is the breakaway threat. But he broke an arm last week, and Mike, he could be gone for the rest of the year. Yeah, one thing Tofield gave you, he runs up in there, and he, yeah. he doesn't have any regard for his body. He just give it up. From the shotgun, Mock's going to take it, and he's got a blocker. 40, 35 at the 30. Spins off one a tackler, and he'll be knocked out of bounds at the 25 by Cromarty after a gain of 27. Uh, the fake to draw, and it becomes uh, Matt Mock's good running ability. He has 149 rushing yards on 35 carries coming into this football game, and he's wide open on the backside till he runs into Cromartie. Interesting, in talking with Mock the other day on the phone, I said, okay, you went and played uh, professional baseball. Would you have been as mature if you had gone to football without playing professional baseball as you are now? And he said, oh, no way. Absolutely no way. But he said, I also have to remember, I can't press. Because I've only had five career starts. He's still a rookie. Davis the handoff. The right side. He'll take it down to the 20. And that is a good surge for the offensive front. You're talking about Matt Mock. And we know who he backed up. Rohan Davy. And both of us had so much respect for Rohan Davy. He was a true warrior for LSU. Uh, he played hurt. And Matt Mock sat behind him and watched the beating he took and what the leadership that he gave on the field. And uh, he's displaying this tonight. And I told you, I, I watched him on tape. I, I don't buy all those guys that say, hey, he can't throw the football. He throws it well. There's a lot of drops in the percentage of completions. But it fell down there. They almost missed the handoff. Davis knocked back, and now they have whistled the play dead. They're saying that Mock's knee hit at the 24-yard line. Boy, Florida really needs a stop, Ron. They need a stop that uh, to force LSU to kick a field goal here and then not come out any worse than three points. Let's see, Matt Mock, yeah, he had a good call by the officials. His knee went down right away. Good call by the side judge. Coverage, run 
Hamilton for the sideline, and he throws it while he is still in the field of play. But they're going to say, did he step out of bounds? Corey Bailey with a lot of pressure on him. I think they're going to say he stepped out of bounds before he delivered the ball because they are marking it at the 28-yard line. Matt Mock was looking for Michael Clayton. He had him from the start, but you're going to see the double team on Matt uh, Michael Clayton. You see that Johnson, Todd Johnson's the safety, comes into the picture also with Gus Scott. Gus was baiting on the play as well. He wanted to pick off there. Corbello with an attempt of 45. He's got the distance on this one. And he is good. As time runs out in the opening quarter, and Coach Saban applauding, and well he should. His Tigers up 13 to nothing. 13 to nothing, LSU, the number 15 ranked team in the nation, leading the 16th ranked Florida. A lot of folks have come from the Bayou country to cheer for their LSU Bengal Tigers tonight. We hold owners came too. straight here from Mardi Gras. <laughs> <laughs> they got the beads on. Corbello with the kick, high end of Miranda short. And on the run is Carthon at the 20, and he'll step out of bounds at the 23. So the game track on this one in the first 15 minutes in a nutshell. Things did not go well for Florida. Fake field goal. I mean, it's perfect. Look at Carthon. Nobody around. The ball to be thrown by about three yards. And then two interceptions by Grossman. The LSU defense talked him into this one. Corey Webster with the second pickoff of the night. This one he takes in for the touchdown. Graham, and here they come with the reverse. This is Taylor Jacobs. 30-35 at the 40, hit from behind. And he'll finally be stopped at the 46 by Brady James. It is a gain of 23 yards. Taylor Jacobs uh, got the kind of speed that can break a game open, get you back in the football game. Rex Grossman with a decent block there. And, uh, Ray Snell also took his man out of the play. Was that my imagination? Or Graham really seemed kind of gimpy on that play as he took the sweep and handed the ball I off. I tell you, when I talked to him before the game and I asked him about his ankle, he didn't deny it. He just... Screen, and the ball, he just throws it away. Now let's go to the sideline. Rob Stone. Hey, Ron, you just saw number 96, LSU's defensive tackle, Byron Dawson, laying a hit on Rex Grossman. Amazing he even got to him. If you look at his left ankle, it's heavily taped over his shoe, and he even has, has like a plastic rod going up his Achilles for extra support, so his mobility certainly in question right now, but he had no problems getting to Grossman there. Yeah, this time of year, a lot of kids have to play with uh, some major hurts. That ball tipped at the line of scrimmage. And Kendrick it Allen. goes incomplete. Yeah, Kendrick Allen. Ron, anytime you throw a quick pass, you off as an offensive lineman, you gotta hit the knees of the defensive lineman. You gotta hit them low so to bring those arms down. You never have a chance to get this pass off. NC State. How about Chuck? Chuck Amato's team. Chuck and Duck. He's yeah. he's got him going. Beats the arch rival. The shoe shields blitz, and here they come, right up the middle, untouched. Grossman gets away from the tackler and throws it complete to Jacob. Randall Gay just came, and he showed blitz, and nobody picked him up. Showed you a little bit about Rex Grossman. He gets right in the eye of the storm right there, steps aside, and gets the ball to Taylor Jacobs. Now, when Nick Saban gets a hold of Randall Gay, he's going to say, hey, wrap him up. Moving quickly on offense, pass to Perez. Carlos Perez, who can also make some things happen in a hurry, finally bumped out of bounds by Hook Finn. Carlos Perez is fast becoming the second receiver on this Florida football team. 23 receptions, three touchdowns, taking a little pressure off of Taylor Jacobs. He's a junior out of Hoboken, New Jersey, 5'10", 202 pounds. 
And as Mike said, the coaches commented this week in our visits with him and watching practice that he really has improved. Gets this one out quickly in the flat. Burnell Brown, a freshman out of Gainesville. And the flag goes down at the 24. Going to be holding on uh, Carlos Perez. Yeah, LSU coaches were yelling at the official to make that call. Carlos Perez, number 23, gets set up. And when, when you throw a screen out there, you can see all of a sudden, I believe it's Lejeune. Lejeune can't get away and uh, did a nice acting job, too. So, Carlos, we bragged on you and then you get a hold of call. <laughs> LSU, though, leading this ball game 13 to nothing. We've just gone under the 14-minute mark left in the first half. And they've got great field position again, even with the penalty right here. Now you've got first and 25. Right. Graham bounces off the tackle. Got to be hit at the line of scrimmage. And wow, Damian James is there to make the tackle. Again, uh, there's no running lanes for Ernest Graham. You watch here the blocking of the offensive line. They're very high. The block of the fullback. Nobody's moved. Spears holds the anchor point, and so all of a sudden help comes from the secondary. There's no place to run. So now for Florida, it is a second down, and it's about 19. You pick it back to Graham. He wants to go back to his quarterback, Grossman. LSU has it covered, and he'll be tackled for a loss. Jeremy Lawrence makes the, the stop as they're pulling out all the stops here. LSU wasn't fooled at all. Well, sometimes, Ron, when you cross the 40-yard line, you figure that other team defensively is going to be in man-for-man. Man. Well, there's nobody on the quarterback when a man-for-man coverage. But LSU caught him in zone, so wisely, Ernest Graham didn't throw that football. need to take it to the 15-yard line. Got him up to delay a game. Sometimes you play because the signals come from the sideline, they take too long, and then... Far to the snap, delay of game against the offense, five-yard penalty, remains third down. And then, Ron, your quarterback's going to change the play because of the look of LSU's defense. Nick Saban and the defense, Kirk Dahl and all those guys, Mush Camp, uh, the defensive coordinator, doing a good job of keeping Rex Grossman on edge. Well, you hear the chant from those who came over from the Bayou country, LSU. Grossman going to go long, up on top. Taylor Jacobs overthrown by about three or four yards. Hook Finn in pretty good shape, but along with the safety, Jack Hunt on Taylor Jacobs. You're not going to see Taylor Jacobs much tonight without two defensive backs with him. Hook Finn, a senior out of Kentwood. Jack Hunt, one of a couple of guys in that secondary that were wide receivers, and they have moved them because of their speed and athletic ability into the secondary. Ingle Martin, who's the number two quarterback for Florida, will kick it away. Second kick of the night. And it's going to bound right back into from the, from the sideline, back into the field of play. It's a 29-yard kick. Let's take a timeout. 13 to nothing to LSU. That's a great shot from outside the stadium. And uh, by the way, that camera set up on the Emerson Alumni Hall. Beautiful complex here in Gainesville. Right now, 12.09 to play as you look inside the arena. 13 to nothing, the LSU Tigers. But the defense has really been devastating on this offense of the Gators. Yeah, well, I was just thinking, Ron, that off, when your offense is playing so poorly, your defense got to come up with a turnover. 
play action. Got his tight end, throws it to Edwards. The ball is tipped and he can't get back to it. And let's check again with Reese Davis. All right, Ron, and Notre Dame remains perfect by the hair of his chinny chin chin again against Pittsburgh. Panthers gave them a fight. This is Carlisle Holiday back in there throwing a nice ball. Ron has battle, went over 100 yards receiving. Don't forget, Notre Dame's got Air Force coming up next. It'll be on the family of networks next Saturday of night. And of course, Air Force coming up on the deuce at 10 o'clock tonight against Brigham Young. I'm going to tell you what that Air Force offense has, uh, has been really, really good. Two tight ends, Robinson and Edwards, on the second down and long. This running play is not going to go very far as Nateel is the first man to get through on a die. And looking at Dominic Davis, a die now takes the place of Tofield because they split time. 57 rushes compared to 66 and Dominic Davis needs a second tailback because he does so much in the kicking game so a dive really has to perform big to replace Tofield. Davis on the sideline the head coach said it himself he said we don't want Davis getting hurt we plan our offense around a one-two punch that's the reason Joseph is going to play a lot from the shotgun deep over the middle and it's incomplete the collision really had nothing to do with the fact Henderson could have uh, caught the ball or not good series by the Florida defense now Scott with pressure Mike and they should end up with pretty good field position barring a booming kick good double coverage by Florida Donnie Jones to kick Ratliff is the man back deep Good round of applause for the defense here in Gainesville. Pressure at the middle, and boy, they almost got that thing. Bounding at the 40, and Ratliff's going to run away from it, and they will touch it dead at the 47-yard line. 38 yards in the kick, and we'll take a break. 11 minutes exactly, left until halftime. Early going, second quarter, LSU Tigers 13 to nothing. And it's been defense for them. Their offense has been okay, but the defense is the one who has set them up and set the table for them. Pretty good field position right here. You'll take this every time with the offense. That's Graham, the lone setback behind Grossman. Play, tries to bounce it outside, stiff arm, second stiff arm, turns the corner, and that's good hard work, six yards on the play. Ron, let's go back to the big field goal and uh, the pass, and I really believe Carthon stopped on that ball. It wasn't the passer's fault, and they almost blocked the kick, so they're an almost team right now. They've been very close in a lot of phases, just not getting the job done. Gus Scott was the man you were looking at. It's going to be close to the first down as Ernest Graham carries. And from where they have spotted him, I don't know, may have to bring in the chains on this one. Lejeune defensively. Ernest Graham's the kind of guy that can get you back in this football game. Seven touchdowns this year. You know, that's Kendrick Allen, the senior out of Bogalusa, who is limping off the field. Number 54. That's a big front seven for LSU. The linebackers are 250 and above. All those four defensive linemen are around 300. So pretty stout group in the front seven. Both teams making quick changes. Florida back to the line of scrimmage. He handed off to Graham. Wow, he gets necktied by Brady James. He'll have the first down, but he will feel that one tonight and also in the morning when he tries to roll out of bed. Yeah, they caught, they caught uh, LSU moving a little bit because they rushed up the line of scrimmage. You're right, Brady James with a, a neck-high tackle. He had 19 tackles versus Virginia Tech. Short drop, quick pass, got it complete to Taylor Jacobs. Flags all over the place. Gonna have a face mask against Demetrius Hookfin. 
Now, I like the play calling on this series. Everything's quick. No delayed. When you have problems in the offensive line, they came up with a couple sweeps. Here's the face mask by Hook Finn. Quick, quick uh, hitch pass. So everything's moving quick right now to protect the quarterback. So that's 15 yards, personal foul. Tackling the, the face mask or the man by the face mask. And they'll put it down just inside the 20-yard line. Ed Zombrecker trying to get a tempo set. Graham, nothing to the right. Bounces it back to the left. And he's going to be tackled just short of the 15-yard line. Hook Finn is the man who stayed at home and wrapped him up. That's again a good back that's got good vision to see there's nothing front side. Ernest Graham shows me a lot, Ron. First of all, he's got heart. Second of all, he's got great hands as a pass receiver out of the backfield. We saw him against Auburn last year when they didn't have him. He's the heart of this team. Well, the two games they lost last year, they didn't have him. First time in the red zone tonight for Florida as they roll the pocket. Throws off the back foot and throws this one out of bounds. Rex Grossman is not throwing well on the run tonight. Kevin Kite, junior out of Camden, Arkansas, is the intended receiver. But Ron, and, and when you say that, you have to move him around because of the protection. So you can't let him always sit back there in a drop back game because he didn't hit too much. Two tight ends, Walker and Troop. It's third down. They need to take it down to the LSU nine. Protection zings it over the middle, has a touchdown, and that's Taylor Jacobs. There was a flag down. thrown on a rope by Rex Grossman. Damian James, a safety. Taylor Jacobs on the post. That was a well-thrown football. It was right there, just on the line. Ball is down. Leach with the extra point attempt. Knocks it home. And now the home folks are getting a little excited as after six interceptions in five quarters, Rex throws a touchdown pass. We'll be right back. LSU and very good defense. He's outside on Taylor Jacobs. He's inside on Taylor Jacobs. They got the great call on. But he, all of a sudden, Damian James, the safety, gets turned around. He's got to be sitting there to intercept that football. Right they the had middle. the right call on for the post that Taylor Jacobs caught. That should have been an interception. First touchdown allowed in the last seven quarters by the LSU Tigers. And as you could see on the replay, exactly what Mike was talking about. They did have the proper call on it. If he sits down and stays at home, that could have been the third interception of the night. Yeah, you got him doubled. You got an outside guy, corner, gay, and you got James on the inside. Petrovich kicking off. And that was about 10 yards out of bounds. So they'll get it at the 35-yard line. Well, it's the latest series from ESPN Original Entertainment, uh, the season, SEC football. A Thursday night at midnight over the course of the season, we'll take a behind-the-scenes look at the SEC teams at home and finish out the season with the SEC championship. This Thursday, it'll be the Kentucky Wildcats as they prepare for the South Carolina Gamecocks. You'll be able to see the game plan that they're performing tonight against South Carolina. Now, and they're off to a good start. We, last score we saw is 10 to nothing. Yeah. I wouldn't count out. Lou Holtz in South Carolina. 10 to 3, we understand the yeah, score now. We just that started three. the fourth quarter. From the 35 yard line. Mock from a shotgun, fakes it to Davis. Now he'll carry it. Has 5, has 10, 15, 20, and he is in to Gator territory at the 42 yard line before Bam Hardman made the stop, a gain of 23 yards. 
Usually the quarterback reads the defensive end to try to see if they bite on this, and that's exactly what he got right there. Mike Natiel, number 59, bid on the handoff to Dominic Davis, and that's why Matt Mock kept the football. Davis, they run a little counter, put the guard out there in front, but they couldn't do much for him. And Reese Davis, uh, what do you got for us? Pete Carroll's offense alive and well and kicking. Down 21-17 to Cal and Sewell Pan McCullough on a second and goal play. Kicks his way into the end zone. Trojans on top of the Bears. High count of 24-21. And Texas Tech and Iowa State still a defensive struggle. Seneca Wallace only 24 yards. Red Raiders defense getting it done so far. You know, Reese, I'd be really interested to know. I saw a forecast earlier today that said it was going to turn very cold and the wind was going to blow between 30 and 40 miles an hour up here. I don't know if that happened or not, but it wouldn't surprise me if nobody can throw the ball. As Davis bounces outside, goes inside the 35 to the 34. For Marty is the man who makes the tackle. Am Hardman, uh, Hardman uh, missed a tackle on that play, Ron, uh, and he doesn't miss many. Watch number 42 right here. Step up there, he's got to make this play. Nobody blocks him, misses the tackle on Dominic Davis. For Marty with the stop, it's a third down. If the Packers want to keep it going, they've got to go to the 32. They are one of six on third down conversions. They have missed their last four. away here comes the pressure mock is just going to do the smart thing and run out of bounds Bam hartman is the man who was chasing him but rather than turning a bad play into disaster just get out of dodge and that's a big play in this football game because lsu with pretty good field position good snap and it looked like matt mock just didn't handle it well right in his hands you say it was a catcher? They were trying to make him a catcher in the minor leagues? This is going to be the fourth punt of the night. And he didn't handle that one like a third baseman, did he? See the numbers on Donnie Jones so far tonight. As long as 46. And the left footer, he got a mountain out of this one. Going to kick it about five yards deep in the end zone. And they will scrimmage from the 20. Here's tonight's Aflac trivia question. Who was the LSU head coach the last time the Tigers beat Florida in Gainesville? We'll have an answer later on. Nick Saban's ball club holding on to a six-point lead. They jumped out to a 13 to nothing start. Corey Webster has two interceptions in the ball game. One of those, he brought back 45 yards for a touchdown. Brand Carthon comes in a tailback for the Gators. Right over the middle, they got Carthon. 25, looks for a block, stiff arms, hook in, puts the head down and picks up the first down. That's really a good second and third effort. Brady James finally made the tackle on him. Now all of a sudden, Florida's taking the short passes, and they're giving them to him. LSU, Ron Carthon with a good catch and a good stiff arm, like you said. Uh, that was a big-time stiff arm. It was like a, a jab to the face of Demetrius Hook, Finn, and Hook disappeared. Now they're going to try to run the ball with two tight ends. Shoot, creeping the safety up, and then they back off of it. They'll go with the run right up the middle, big opening. That's going to be a gain of close to eight yards on that play. Damian James makes the stop on Rand Carthon. Jonathan Cullen with uh, with a nice block. Of the a play. lot of a lot of times when you look at the one back when he moves up, it's going to be a pass for Florida. Carthon now the one back. Florida spelling, is spelling uh, Graham right. As Florida, as Mike said, uh, getting the play in and getting set and running the play quicker than they were. Carthon again. And they take it to the left, and as he crawls his way close to the first down, not going to have it. Damian James will make the stop. He'll have about a half yard to pick up. Now, Florida's got to take advantage of Damian James coming up like he comes up. 
against two tight ends. There's got to be some way of faking that run and trying to throw the post behind Damian James because he's too far up there and too fast in run support. Now here are the third down conversions. Tigers one of seven, Florida five of nine. Clock runs four minutes, 40 seconds left until intermission. Willie Green in the backfield with Carthon this time. Third down and short. I think he'll play action. Going to go on top. Taylor Jacobs thrown about, wow, that's a, off about five yards to his right. Randall gave it the cover, but it really didn't matter. That was truly an errant throw by Rex Grossman. Now Rex Grossman's going to try to hit Taylor Jacobs, but he never gave him a chance to catch the football. See, he's looking over the inside shoulder, and the ball is being thrown over the outside shoulder. Far away from him. Engle Martin to kick it away. Third time that he will have punted tonight. That'll help you on short yardage the next time. Here's his kick. Wobbly spiral. Semi off the side of his foot. Now takes a big Florida bounce. And it's going to roll dead at around the 20-yard line. And the answer to tonight's Aflac trivia question, who was the LSU head coach the last time the Tigers beat Florida here in Gainesville? The answer is Bill Arnsbarger, 1986. And after that, Arnsbarger left LSU after that season to become Florida's athletic director. Yeah, and Bill Arnsberger's uh, not only a good football coach, but he's a good man. And uh, really a low-key guy that uh, was a very good football coach. And, uh, People who worked under him and players who played for him have high respect for the man. Mock gives the ball. Davis right up the middle. Going to go for short yardage. Reese Davis will check with you again. All right, in the bluegrass, South Carolina and Kentucky. Corey Jenkins has had a little bit of a problem putting the ball on the ground. They're deep in the red zone. A second down play, and Jenkins escapes one tackle, but as he's headed to the house, it gets loose. That's all right. Big Watt Sanderson is there to cover it up for the Gamecocks, and they've got things locked up at 10. In case you're just joining us, miss what happened this afternoon. This is why this game is so important for Florida. The dog beat Tennessee by five. Our situation, 13 to 7. The Tigers of LSU lead it. Here comes the pressure. They set the middle screen to Davis. And it's going to be a gain of short yardage. Hardman and also Natil are there. And an observation on that. He threw that thing so high, it gave that defense an opportunity. It was like a parachute. It <laughs> gave them an opportunity to come over and react quicker. Yeah, they really did react, too. Uh, Florida's defense talked about it in the first quarter. Very good afoot. Third down. Tigers need to take it to their own 31. Ron, you, we, Clayton has been silent for a while. He's on the inside receiver. They're going to move him. They try to go to him. That's the direction Mock is looking in from, and it is tipped and almost intercepted. Oh, boy. Cromarty almost had the gift. And Florida knew they were going to try to get the ball to Michael Clayton, too. Michael Clayton with an out route and then works back in the hairpin route. Gus Scott in pretty good shape on him. Matt Mock staring him down and almost the pick. Ratliff, the deep man, high hanging spiral. This one's a beauty. All the way back to the 25. Going to take it to the 31, so a really nice kick. 51 on the punt and six on the return. And Reese Davis, what do you got for us? Well, Ron, I checked on that wind for you, and Ames is gusting up to about 20 miles per hour. Seneca Wallace was able to complete a couple of passes, get them close against Texas Tech. Seneca Wallace, oh, he's running the wrong way. It appears Seneca Wallace is in trouble. It appears that Seneca Wallace is out of trouble. Watch his clock. Hello. Seneca Wallace into the house and the Cyclones are on top. Texas Tech 10 to 3 on a scintillating run. The first touchdown of the game. Breeze, I could tell you after doing a lot of basketball up there, if it's 20 miles an hour in that stadium, it's like 40 because there's nothing to stop it. There are not a lot of trees outside either end zone. 
13 to 7 our score swing pass Ernest Graham back in the lineup and he is going to be hit after a short game they'll stop him at the 35 Kendrick Allen and we're glad that he's back in the lineup and uh, healthy enough to play you know it's impressive about Reese Davis he's a weatherman too uh, you, you ask hey. for the weather he gives it to you total trickeration yeah, I mean he he's football baseball I think he does boxing now he's a weatherman time of possession almost even time they roll the pocket to the other side he's going to go long had a little stop and go and Jacobs was out there and then they started getting some help from the top LSU is playing the sprint out game very well they're sitting on it there's not much open Taylor Jacobs with a stop and go but pretty good coverage uh, Randall Gay the junior from Bruley, Louisiana, which is just across the river bridge. He and Luzerne both are from Bruley. One fifty-two left until halftime. And the shotgun, a pressure on Grossman. Pass in and out of the hands of uh, Carlos Perez. Boy, he paid for it. Man, he got hit again. Can't throw it any better than that. Uh, Blitz Reed. LSU's coming after him. Ball right on the money, right through the hands of Carlos Perez. So the fourth punt of the night coming up for Florida. Missed opportunities. Dominic Davis is the deep man. And this is his best kick of the night, far and away. Driving spiral from the 20. Going to be hit immediately, and what kind of coverage was that? Wow. As soon as he caught it, a 49-yard kick, loss of two, and it's Faison, who was right there to make the tackle. Well, it's Monday night countdown that delivered by UPS at 7.30 Eastern. Join Stuart Scott and the best in the business for all the news from week six in the NFL. And then at 9 o'clock, it's ABC's Monday Night Football. It will be... The 49ers taking on the Seahawks. The Seahawks had an open day last week. I'm picking the Seahawks in this football game. You are? Yep. Okay. Solely by that uh, having the open date. <laughs> With you saying that, they have no chance now. <laughs> they die in the lineup. And the running play will take it out to around the 26. Reese Davis. All right, Ryan, coming up on the Saturn Halftime Report, all sequels need the occasional plot twist. Why? What? We had an overtime thriller in Arbery in the Big Ten, and also down in the Pac-10, we went right down to the wire with another field goal attempt for UCLA against Oregon, and another familiar outcome. We'll see you in just a few minutes. Okay. You know, that, that wide left today, bad pass from center, and he had already started forward, and his weight was just far enough that he yanked it. Second down, they need to take it to the 30-yard line. Dominic Davis to the left side, churning those legs, breaks out of a tackle. It's Adai, I beg your pardon, and he will have the first down plus five more yards to the 35. It's a gain of nine. That's why the LSU coaches like the young back, Adai, redshirt freshman back. Michael Haywood, the running back coach, says uh, he's, he's a special player. See Dominic Davis on the sideline getting a breather. Adai tonight, four carries, 30 yards. Seven and a half per try. They swing the ball out to him. This also is what they talked about. He catches the ball so well. And that is a gain of close to eight on that play. LSU has two timeouts. They're going to use one right here. So 25 seconds on the clock, and we'll take the break with a 13 to 7 Tigers right back with more from Gainesville. 13 to 7, LSU leads it with 25 seconds left. What would you do here, Mike? If I'm Florida, I'll make sure I know where Michael Clayton is. I roll up to him. I get somebody in his face and somebody behind him. Pressure coming in the middle. Mark throws it away now. Now they're questioning that, and I wonder, was he not outside the tackle box? I don't think so, Ron. I think that's pass. Uh, he threw it away. Clint Mitchell is the man who was uh, providing 
the uh, the pressure. Yeah, good call, grounding. Intentional grounding against the offense. That is a spot foul. And also, also down. Third down. Now Florida has two timeouts, Ron. They came close to blocking a punt. Here's you choose uh, for yourself. He stays right inside there. Yeah, he was not outside the tackle box. No question about that. Now you've got to be ready to use your timeout if you're Florida. Mm -hmm. with a quarterback draw and uh, tell you what he is close to the first down <laughs> as he takes it to the 44 and a half yard line misses it by about a half yard I think both coaches are going to let it die right now and so Nick is saying I didn't want you to call timeout I wanted that clock to run out so two ticks showing on the clock now Matt Mock saying coach we can't take him with us Next Saturday night, we'll be back down here in the swamp as the Auburn Tigers uh, come in here. Try to get the wheels back on the Cadillac. And uh, what happened today? I didn't get a chance to see that game, but Arkansas with a fine effort. The, uh, the, the Escalade did didn't get out of the out of the garage quickly enough. Now you talk about pressure on a on a coach. <laughs> Ron Zook on the sideline. Of course, he's uh, replacing the guy who was a Heisman Trophy winner here, an extremely successful coach. And Steve would uh, be uh, an anxious guy to oh, sign also. No question. In fact, if Steve had been here, Grossman would have gone to the sideline in that first quarter. <laughs> Fourth down and short. Takes the snap. Throws it over the middle. Got it complete to Clinton. 30. 25 and tackled at the 17 yard line. Cromarty makes the stop. All for stats. 39 yards on the completion. LSU 19 and 1 when leading at halftime. So our halftime score LSU 13 to 7 over Florida. Now here's Reese Davis with the Saturn halftime report. Ron, thank you very much. You know, Mike mentioned that the all stands for Matt Mock. And it was much the same in the first 30 minutes. Yeah, the first quarter was bad for Rex Grossman. Two bad interceptions. But I thought he settled down in the second quarter. Now here's a hit he takes, and uh, he's been going down a bunch. Here's the interception that came back for the uh, score. And here's the overthrow where he just overthrew Taylor Jacob. And then he hits the touchdown with the rush. Nick Saban knows that Rex Grossman can get hot and turn this game right around. Matt Mock on the other side of the field. The sophomore out of Jasper, Indiana. I thought he played well, Ron. First half. He did. Corbello prepares to kick this off and get us going here in the second half. The five is Carthon. Carthon knocked out of bounds close to the 30 yard line. And game track on this one. Florida's missed chances. A fake field goal. Carthon wide open. And they missed him. Then the two interceptions, this one right here. Corey Webster takes it back the distance for the touchdown. Florida fights right back and scores the touchdown, and they are within seven. And any time you're at home and can bring it to within six points. Ron Ingle Martin, the backup quarterbacks in the game, is a wide receiver. The handoff goes on a sweet play. It's going to go for just a couple of yards. And Ingle Martin, who had just come into the ball game that Mike was talking about. 
When you look at Florida, what they did well in the first half is they attacked the linebackers of LSU. Second down, quick pitch, got it complete. That's good for the first down, and it's been Troop, the junior out of Augusta, Georgia. Mike, what do you see in these halftime stats from that uh, first 30 minutes of play? There's the big difference in the ball game right there, the two interceptions. Otherwise, both teams have a struggles uh, running the football. Maybe LSU a little bit better than Florida, but Florida has not been able to establish any running game. Tight ends in the lineup for the Gators. Plenty of time on the play clock. Grossman again, short drop, throws it out complete, and that's going to be a gain of eight to Carlos Perez. He'll be pushed back by Damian James. And that's what Rex Grossman and Ed Zombrecher, the offensive coordinator, Larry Fedora, who coaches uh, the offense, they got to be able to take the short passes against LSU. down to play with here with the second down and only about a yard and a half to pick up the first. Grossman pumps it. Taylor Jacobs well overthrown on the near sideline and the hook pin was out there on the cover. One thing you know when you're going to play Florida, Rex Grossman's going to go to Taylor Jacobs. That stop and go move again, that, that has not been able to, to beat the LSU defensive backs. Jacobs is the number one target. You gotta take him away if you're gonna play Florida. You gotta make some other uh, receiver beat you. Play to Graham, hit behind the line of scrimmage. He's going to be knocked down for a loss on the third down. And it's Lavallee who blew the play up. He got penetration, and the minute that happened, the play was just not going to work. Well, you know, you you talked about it. You said second and short, you have a down to play with. But that's usually a play action down. Yeah. And when you have an offensive line that struggles a little bit, every first down you need to get, unless you're going to hit a home run. Ingle Martin, fifth punt of the night. Strange looking knuckleball here. It's going to hit into 10. And it's going to go into the end zone. Boy, they were within a breath of killing that one at the one yard line. Let's check on the sideline, Rob Stone. Thanks, Ron. I had a chance to speak with both head coaches. We start on the LSU side with Nick Saban. Really happy on how his defense is handling their first real test of the year and how they're kind of dealing with that Florida pseudo no huddle. He wants to try and get a little more consistency out of his offense, but he was really upbeat in the locker room saying, guys, we won the first 30 minutes, got to carry it over, take the final 30. On the Florida side, pretty happy. Glad they got those late points, gets momentum. But one thing Coach Zook was distressed about, hey, our wideouts have got to run better routes. A lot of miscommunication in that, that department. Okay, Rob, it's a first down and 20 for the LSU Bingo Tigers. I think LSU has got to come out and establish the run here in the second half. And a quick screen right here. And out of the 30-yard line, nice play. Devery Henderson. And as you take a look after the 12-yard gain at the possessions. Yeah, they started strong, and they got a couple field goals. And uh, uh, ever since that point, you got to point to uh, Florida's defense. Very quick defense, John Thompson, the defensive coordinator. Uh, he worked at uh, LSU for 30 days. He took a job there and then uh, left. Well, the defense of Florida has only given up uh, six points because seven of them came on the interception. And we got flags down in every direction here. Yeah, you you would be pleased with the effort that your defense has given. penalty against LSU. When you lose a back like Tofield, you look at the penalty yards. 
it's a tough loss. I know they've got two very good backs behind Tofield, but Tofield is the kind of guy that can light you up and get your team going in the running game. Dominic Davis right there, the senior out of Burbridge, Louisiana. Well, same play to the other side, and that one's a little high to Henderson. Same play that they ran on first down. Yeah, Florida, picked up the first, excuse Florida me. jumping all around on defense. Clint Mitchell, a down lineman, is playing as a linebacker. Matt Bach trying to get the ball outside to Henderson. Couldn't hold on. Had it blocked. If he could bring his football in. So that stops the clock with 11.37 left in the third quarter. One thing LSU has not done offensively, turned the ball over. Pitchback goes to Davis, finds a crease, and he got tripped up. That looked as though it had bigger yardage written on it, and as he tried to make the cut, lost his footing. Indiana with a shocker today. K-State wins big. Texas got upended by Oklahoma today, and they don't have time to be licking their wounds. They got to go no. to Manhattan next week. Kansas State won big today. LSU one of nine on third down conversions. Mock running all over the place, and this is just what John Thompson was talking about. He's going to scramble and pick up the first down, probably from two different directions should have been sacked, but he gets 14 yards. In our meeting with John yesterday, he, he went on and on about that. He said he got to stop the running ability of Matt Mock. Now, they got twists going on here, which means defensive linemen are exchanging responsibility. And sometimes you want your defensive linemen, and John Thompson talked about this, is staying in front of the quarterback. Don't get behind him where you can create the lanes for him to scramble. And Savelio and also Scott missing tackles on the play. But they go back to Dominic Davis. Little stretch play, and he'll have three yards on the, the uh, carry. Jimbo Fisher was interesting in talking with him last Wednesday. Uh, Mike, with him talking about, he said, the thing I have to be careful of with Matt, because he is older, he is more mature, and, and played the, uh, another professional sport, that he said, I've got to keep in mind that he just has so very few starts under his belt. And he said, I've got to be careful in pushing him too much. Yeah, I, when you have Rohan Davy, you know, you expect a lot of Rohan Davy, but Matt Mock is really uh, inexperienced. Second down, who option pass, wanting to go deep, and he just throws this one complete to Clayton. I thought for a moment he's going to throw it away, and all of a sudden this dart, number 14, came into the picture. Matt Mock takes a hit from Clint Mitchell right here. He hits him in the mouth. Michael Clayton gets open. You can see his takeoff and his speed to get open on that reception. Matt Mock, watch him take a hit here in the head. That was a big time throw. You know, you talked about Marcus Spears and his abilities. Michael Clayton was a high school, a great high school basketball player as well. Average 19 points a game. On first down. Well, he keeps it. Didn't fake Florida this time. That is a great job of staying at home defensively, led by Daryl Lee. Yeah, Darrell Lee sat right out there, knew the play was coming. Matt Moss reading this all the way, but he got a bad read right here. So with the loss, going to be second down and 15. New line of scrimmage just shy of the 35. Clock goes under nine minutes to play third quarter. Tigers by six. And it's a draw play. Davis had a steam, has five, has ten, and counted off at very close to 12 yards in the play. And Reese Davis will check back with you. Kentucky's last chance to win the game. 16-12, South Carolina on top of the Cats. Four takes to go to the battleship Lorenzen. 
Heaves it to the end zone. Tommy Cook's back there. Tommy Cook gets his hands on it, but can't pull it in. And Lou Holtz's team escapes. 16 to 12, the final. Iowa State now up by two touchdowns on Texas Tech. They are in the fourth quarter in Ames. That run by Davis just now, by the way, his longest of the night. Third down. They need the 19 and a half yard line. Crowd really getting into this play. Pressure off the corner. He'll keep it. He'll have the first down and be down in the vicinity of the 16 yard line. Mike, this play right here is the one that is consistently eating Florida up. Yeah, it's a single wing play, Ron. All of a sudden, your quarterback becomes an extra running back. Hardman, the linebacker, middle linebacker, number 42, takes on two blockers to try to get to Matt Mock, but he's unable to stop him from picking up the first down. You can see 73, Rob Sale, the senior out of Monroe, and also Solomon Lee, senior out of Bastrop. Davis again, right up the middle, and the workhorse will take it for a gain of four. Hartman again making the stop for the Gators. This has been a Matt Mock drive, this big plays. Here's Hartman again, the middle linebacker. you got to make plays if you're in the middle linebacker position. Makes the tackle on Dominic Davis. But this has been a series that Matt Mock has come up big. 11th play of the drive coming up right here. Gives it to Davis, and Dominic's not going anywhere on this play. Nice job in the middle. Savalio, also Ian Scott, combining on the tackle. Mitchell came over from his defensive end spot also. It's a huge one right here because a field goal obviously is a nine-point lead, but they can ill afford with this active and good defense. I don't think they can afford to, to go back down, Mike, by 13 points. No. Do you? No, I don't think so. Be, uh, again, LSU burning the clock, too, with this drive. And we're under six and a half minutes. Play clock is at six. Florida blitz in the middle. Mark swings the pass out. Got a man wide open 15 at the 10, at the 5, and touchdown Henderson. on the pass play to the junior out of Opelousas, Louisiana, Deborah Henderson. Hit him on the blitz. Florida coming with the blitz. They hit the screen outside. Henderson with a good run. Got Scott with a bad angle and a touchdown to show for it. Corbello tries to make it a 20 to seven ball game. Boots it up and he's good. So we'll take a timeout as we take one more look at this touchdown pass play going to Henderson. Watch the move that he puts on Scott right there. Whoa. By him and into the end zone. 20 to 7 Tigers will be right back. LSU with a good call because they got to tight end and back to the blitz side right here. All of a sudden now you're going to get this receiver over here on the screen. Three against two. Henderson gets the ball. No pressure on him once he gets the football able to get in the end zone. A very good call by Jimbo Fisher anticipating the blitz in the right call. Matt Mock on the far sideline talking with uh, Jimbo right now. You know, Mike, I'm not sure Jimbo Fisher gets the acclaim that maybe he should. He's still a young coach, but he is very good as an offensive coordinator. That ball is fumbled and picked up, and a tackle is going to be made. It's going to be on the one-yard line. Yep. Bazon. Boy. As if things already have uh, not been 100% for the Gators tonight. Kick is, is fumbled, he picks it up, and is stopped at the one yard line. What a horrid spot to have to bring out your offensive unit and, uh, and to go from. Well, Rex Grossman, a veteran, so uh, shouldn't bother him being back here in the one. Thing you have to be careful of. field for him. If, if you get an offensive holding call in that end zone, though, it's a safety. 
Play action pass, try to throw it out here. They're going to bang it out, just try to get some yardage. Snell in motion. They pitch it back to Graham. He is boy, barely out on the field to play. The ball came loose. You could see LSU players signaling safety. Marquise Hill is the man who got out there first. Their offensive line not good enough to knock it out of here. I think you got to throw the ball out of here. You see they lose the battle at the line of scrimmage. Ernest Graham just very lucky to get back out of there. You got to throw the ball out of here. Graham Carthon comes into the ball game for Florida. Try to go away from Taylor Jacobs. He's down here at the bottom of the screen. Short drop. Quick look in. There he is. And that's enough for the first down. Perez, I beg your pardon, it was Perez. Yeah, Taylor Jacobs was down at the bottom round, and you're going to double him. The backer's going to get underneath him. This is the best throw you got right here. Carlos Perez, the one thing Florida's got to do, and Rex Grossman's got to quit depending on Taylor Jacobs so much. Again, short drop, quick look in, the ball is tipped. Marcus Spears got a hand on that one. And for those Florida fans sitting at home saying, well, uh, he was all over that receiver, maybe even before the ball got there, once it's tipped, pass interference is off. Fair game. Blitz coming off the right corner. Ball is tipped and knocked right back into Grossman. And this time it's Lionel Turner. Lionel Turner is six foot two. He's going to come off the corner, get his hands right up here. Deflect the football from Rex Grossman. Trying to get the ball to Carlos Perez. It is third down. Barely got that play away. Here comes pressure. Throws this one away, and the ball is in out of the hands of the receiver. Carlos Perez. Not a good series. Again, pressure on Rex Grossman. Never had a chance to throw the ball cleanly. LSU pit band that has uh, traveled over here from Baton Rouge, making a lot of noise down there in that cheering section. LSU's got a chance to turn the lights out here early. Engel Martin, not a good kick. And picked up at the 50-yard line, Davis. Davis at the 30. Is hit and finally stopped at the 25-yard line and will take a timeout. Tigers 20-7, and I'll tell you, they are threatening again. ESPN's College Football Saturday Night, presented by the United States Postal Service and in part by Best Buy. For the latest technology, turn on the fun at Best Buy. Welcome back to the Swamp. Four minutes, 17 seconds left to play. Third quarter, Tigers 20 to seven over the Gators. And following a 25 yard kick return, the Tigers set up shop at the Florida Gator 25. And right now, the defense of Florida having to play way too much in the second half. Mock pumped it once, now going deep. Got him in the end zone. And it's Henderson. Back to back scores for him. This one from 25 yards. When you get field position like LSU's getting in the second half, that's a great call because. You got a chance to put a dagger in the heart of Florida. 
and they hit him, uh, hit Henderson with a touchdown pass. Now they're going for two. And a lot of folks not real happy with what's going on right now. LSU going to go for two and try to make it a 28 to 7 ball game. They roll the pocket to the right, and now he throws deep in the end zone, and that ball tipped away. Well, as we uh, go to break, let's take one more look at the Henderson catching this pass for the touchdown. Not good ball recognition by Ratliff. 26 to 7 LSU. Well, if you just joined us, that is the story. The LSU Tigers, the number one defense in the country, getting 10 points off turnovers in the first quarter alone. They built that lead to 13 to nothing. Then the Gators came back and made it 13 to 7. And I mean, here in the second half, it has been all LSU Tigers. Ron, they had them stopped, if you remember correctly, in the third quarter. But Matt Mock is really has been the player of the game. He has thrown the ball well. He's run the ball well. This guy is graduating to be a very fine quarterback. Here comes the kick. This one returnable from the five-yard line of Kelvin Kite. And a blocker in front. Look out, 30, and out to the 35-yard line. They'll have good field position to work from. So let's take a look at the Pennzoil storyline. Mock. 11 of 18, 157, two touchdowns, has rushed for 68. That's a career high. Grossman, 12 of 29, 118, a touchdown and two picks. And turnovers, LSU none, and Florida two. Yeah, Mock has outplayed uh, Rex Grossman uh, in the battle of the quarterbacks tonight. And, you know, when you talk about Matt Mock around the country, everybody says, well, they got that quarterback who can't throw the ball. Forget it. He can throw and he can run. Ernest Graham right up the middle. He's going to ramble for 10 yards. Counted off as 11. He'll take it to the 46. Randall Gay is the man who's there to make the stop. And, and number five, Ron, will not quit on you. You're stealing yeah, I, my I, thoughts. I mean, he will. He, we talked about him being a warrior. He is a winner. You want him on your football team. running. We're now under four minutes left to play third quarter. Grossman fakes the run, pumps it, going to try to get him up on top. And the ball overthrown. A little miscommunication there is a tight is the man he was looking for. Rob Stone, let's go back to the sideline. What do you got? Ron, man, you read the nonverbals on the Florida sideline. This team is beaten. They came off the field, heads down. But the one guy who was upbeat, yeah, number eight, Rex Grossman, had the headset on the whole time. After that first LSU score, came right back, slapping his OL line, slapping his running backs. He is upbeat. Remember, this is a guy who thinks he can throw a touchdown to every single pass play. Well, he better start throwing three pretty fast. Grossman in the third quarter, three of eight for 30 yards. Pressure coming up the middle. Oh, he gets belted as the pass is thrown incomplete. And Grossman is up, but Lionel Turner just, wow, he almost took his head off. Talked about this a couple weeks ago. I said I had a college football coach. His name was Earl Bentley. He used to say, quarterback can't throw laying on his back. And he used to always preach that to his defenses. You know what else, Mike? There are times also when the coaches say Rex gets a little hard-headed, you can get a pro call to have a tight end stay in there with you to help you block. And, but I'll tell you, you can't take many hits like that no. and, and make it. Eight to night. On third down and ten. Sets in the pocket, drills this one, and incomplete is the ball. Well protected, you could see. Carlos Perez going up, but there were two defenders right there. Lejeune, one of them, and also James. The other thing that's happening, Ron, in, uh, is most of the throws are outside. Again, they, they attacked the linebackers early in the second quarter with some success, but these throws are out in the corners. Martin's kick, end over end. On the run, Davis makes the catch, no fair catch, and he's only got one person to beat. He is caught from behind as he was trying to get by Martin, and LSU is going to take over again on the Florida 
side of the 50-yard line, 31 on the kick and 36 on the return. And Carter finally made the tackle. Well, there's no sense in fair catching anyway in college football because the halo rule, you get the catch. Dominic Davis, he was not thinking fair catch. He's just roaring down the football field. It's pretty good to LSU football team, though. Joseph Adai is the lone rep running back this time, and he put it in his stomach. He'll take it off a right tackle inside the 40 down to the 38. Hey, what his average tonight is a late flag comes in. Adai's average per carry tonight might have got to be between seven and eight yards. Yeah, and I like the, the fact that they uh, have confidence in him. I believe it's going to be called on Andrew Whitworth, hey, what number 76. Six yards per try, six carries, 36, his total on the evening. Well, when you look at uh, Florida tonight, 118 yards passing. And when you look at LSU, 157 yards passing. There is no foul on the play. Here's what we're going to see here. Whitworth, number 76, had a hold of him and uh, was continuing the blocks, and I think that's a good call. He died right up the middle. He puts a head down close to the first down. I don't think he has. He's going to miss it by about a half yard. Clint Mitchell is down at the bottom of that stack. Ron, watch a die here on this play. Watch him cut back. He's going to come in the frame. Now watch him cut back. And there's Clint Mitchell waiting for him. But that was the hold that he needed to hit. Good vision by the running back, young running back. Clint Mitchell has had a good year. He's yeah. really a guy who's been the, the glue for this, uh, for this defense. Help them get better. Third down and short. They die right up the middle, and he's going to have the first down. Well, this one was a dangerous situation. to get eight or nine in the box, and if you break that first wave, it, it could be hello and goodbye quickly. Norwood made the tackle. Adai is just going to hit up in there, and you see the LSU offensive line open it up. Great camera work to show the first down and what you were talking about. A chance to break it big. Rob Sale, Stephen Peterman, Whitworth over there on that side. Yeah, Wilkerson the center, Rodney Reed, offensive line's done a nice job for LSU. And the thing, what they're doing right now is just what they want to do. Keep the ball away from Florida's offense and run the clock. Quarterback draw, hit behind the line of scrimmage. He may have gotten back to it. Well, it's Sunday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern. And coverage begins with NFL Primetime presented by Miller Lite. That's at 7.30. The Miami Dolphins uh, against the Denver Broncos. Battle of strength on strength. Sunday night beginning 7.30 Eastern time. Ron, you're talking about strength on strength. Uh, Miami and Dolphins rushing offense ranks third in the NFL. What do you think Denver gives up? They only give up 61 rushing yards a game. Ricky Something's got to give. Ricky Williams is lost 25 pounds and it suits him just fine doesn't it? swing pass got this one completed Henderson could not get loose that's Ratliff who took his feet right out from under it now they they played that screen well that was the screen pass that hit them for two touchdown passes Henderson Ratliff gets inside the block and makes the play. Third down, the Tigers need to take it to the Gator 21-yard line. Swings this one out, and Davis can go nowhere. Nice job by Ratliff. He is right there to make a nice one-on-one -on -one tackle, and that ball got hit by Clint Mitchell. So slow in getting up, there's a commercial break. That's the end. 26 to 7 as we head to the fourth quarter. Those two pretty young ladies are not giving up for the Gators. They think they could come back. 
Those are true fans. Yeah, now they're with you. Win, lose, or tie. <laughs> and that's what you want in a, a fan. Ron's up pacing the sideline for Bello to attempt this field goal. Ball is going to be placed out at the 42 eight. And it's a fake. Flag is down and he is off and gone. Blaine back will take it for the touchdown. And now let's check the marker at the line of scrimmage. Did they have enough men at the line of scrimmage, Mike? Offside. It's going to be offside on Florida. 35 yards on the fake field goal. Blaine Beck, watch the play. Now, this crowd now is sitting here in stunned silence. And there are a lot of people headed for the exits. Extra point attempt is good. And LSU, 33. The Florida Gators, 7. Florida was a more than a touchdown favorite in this ball game here tonight. Got off to a bad start, Ron, and then they added to it in the second half. And LSU doing a pretty good job of scouting Florida and making big plays and uh, out playing this football team. So here is the ESPN game track. All-purpose muck. Yeah, he has been that. He has run. He has passed. Henderson, two third quarter touchdowns. Here's one right here. Then he'll go to the other side and do the same thing as they pump it and then take it into the end zone. And he is good to forward the touchdown. And here's the fake. And they have blocked real well. Blaine Beck is going to take it for the touchdown. Damn Hardman had it. Hardman had a chance at him and uh, couldn't get over to make the play. And there are a lot of smiles on that uh, LSU bench, and for good reason. Ron Reese did not listen to us last week. Matt Mock ought to get a football helmet tonight. They give him away about 1:30 in the morning, so they need to give Matt Mock one. He has played a great game at quarterback for LSU. Barbella with the kickoff, and it's a line drive two yards deep in the end zone that will not be returned by Kite. And Reese Davis has checked back with you. Ron, I'll consider Mark strongly, but Seneca Wallace did some more business in this one. Probably the Heisman front runner in most eyes against Texas Tech, laying one up there to Lance Young, and Iowa State put this thing away late. Took care of the Red Raiders 31 to 17, the final, and Cal. Go to touchdown late, couldn't get the onside kick. SC prevails by a deuce, 30 to 28. Wow. Ever since you said the wind was uh, blowing out to Iowa State, they just started rolling on the points. That's right, but they, they were running the ball primarily, weren't they? Yes. <laughs> Ernest Graham hit behind the line of scrimmage. He'll fight his way out to the 21. Randall Gay is the man who makes the hit. Well. LSU under Saban, 23 and 1 when scoring 20 points or better. I go back to what I said off the top of the telecast. This LSU staff may have done as good or better job than anybody in the country last year. They got socked at home by LSU, uh, by uh, Ole Miss. They turned things around, and I'll tell you, Mike, at the end of the year, they beat some really good people that beat them soundly. Grossman, they pick up the blitz at the middle, and he throws a pick. Intercepted by Spears. Marcus Spears at the 10, and he'll take it back to the 9-yard line. So for Rex Grossman, that is seven interceptions in his last eight quarters, and we're not through the eighth quarter here tonight. Uh, zone blitz and uh, Marcus Spears drop back in coverage and pick Rex Grossman off. And it's just a matter of naming the score now. Rex Grossman with an effort to make the tackle. And, and Spears weighs 295. I, and he, we talked about him being a basketball football uh -huh. player in high school. Very gifted athlete. 
Pitch back to Davis. They'll take it to the right side. Hurt is one man. And he goes out of bounds. The only mistake he made on that play to stop the clock at the 1350 mark. His coach would just like to run that clock on down, hop on the plane, and head back to Baton Rouge. Rob Sale with a good block. And seven interceptions in the last two games. And uh, this coaching staff of Florida and Ron Zuck, very capable coaching staff, needs to go back to the drawing board and try to figure out what this team does best. But again, when you can't establish a running game, then you throw it all over the place. LSU playing the pass very well tonight. Going to go with the running play with Davis and the left tackle. He'll be uh, stopped after a, about a half yard gain, tripped up by Scott. On 70 yards rushing for the Gators, only 118 passing. Wow. LSU's combining passing and running for 327 yards. And it's all snowballed in the second half. Mm -hmm. and Gators came back, scored a touchdown, cut it to 13 to 7. But it has been all LSU here in the second half. Quarterback draw, Monk puts a head down, and he will be stopped at the two by Clint Mitchell. I'm going to call Bino Cook and get him to give a helmet. I know he gets on that show at 1.30. He gets on there for two and a half minutes. He could give him a helmet. If Reese Davis and those other guys won't give Matt Hawk a helmet. I, I have a feeling they're going to let's call they're Bino. do your bidding. Now let's call Bino. For Bello will attempt a field goal. They'll place it down at the 10-yard line. Has kicks already at 37 and 45. And add one from 20 as he knocks it home. So let's take a break. 12 minutes, 29 seconds. Showing on the clock left in this one. 36 to 7 LSU. Well, the LSU Tiger fans are feeling it. Scott. 36 to 7. Scott. Thought you forgot my name there for a second. <laughs> Scott. I know you were talking to the well, truck. Your middle name. You forgot to uh, hit that little button right there. I thought that was your middle name. Right. <laughs> Francis Scott Key. Corbello's kick. It's going to be a knuckleball. That's going to get by Carthen. And they'll uh, scrimmage for the 20-yard line. They'll catch the latest series from ESPN Original Entertainment, the season, SEC football, Thursday night at midnight. Follow the uh, cheerleaders, the parties, alumni, and players in the classroom and on the practice field for the seven days leading up to SEC matchups every week. This week, ESPN follows the Kentucky Wildcats as they prepare for South Carolina. Charlie Strong's defense did it again for uh, South Carolina. Good effort against Kentucky. Quick pass, got that one complete to Perez. <laughs> Brady James got up and uh, was pushing somebody after he had been pushed. And you can tell by the concern on the Gator fans. And tonight there was a lot to be concerned about because not much has gone correctly for them. I can tell you this, so Ron. Ron Zook is a very capable coach, and he's got a very capable staff. It's a tough job right now because of the weakness in the offensive line and some other areas. Rex Grossman is not playing as well as he can play. Grossman gets hit again. just as the ball is delivered. Taylor Jacobs cannot turn around. Brady yeah. James. Yep. And this is the kind of effort when you got to go back and you got to look at everything in this tape and make the switches you need to make. Here it comes Scott Free, Brady James, and knocks Rex Grossman down. Watch this. And when you get hit like that, third quarter, fourth quarter, you can't make the plays. Third down, sets deep in the pocket. Good protection this time. Still looking, doesn't want to run it, and is going to be caught and knocked down. And that was not the fault of the offensive line. And Jeremy Lawrence will make the tackle. It that was a coverage sack as they did a good job in the secondary. And talking to the coaches at Florida, they talked about Rex Grossman and. Uh, 
that after the Ole Miss game that he stood at the podium and he takes responsibility. And sometimes it's not the responsibility of the quarterback. The offensive line breaks down. Sometimes the receivers don't run the right routes. Martin with a kick off the side of his foot. We'll take a Florida bounce and now we'll stop it around the 40 yard line. 38 yards and a kick will go away for a moment. The LSU Tigers with it well in hand. Well, the <laughs> even the uh, LSU Tiger clergy are, uh, <laughs> are excited about this one tonight. 36 to 7, they jumped out, and the defense set the tone in this football game. In case you missed the early going, Mock will hand it off, and this is a die. He will take it across the 45 to the 47. Let's take a look at the schedule of Florida. They are home next week. In fact, we'll be here for the Auburn game. Then uh, they have got Georgia on November the 2nd in the cocktail party down in Jacksonville. We will be doing that one as well. Then uh, at Vanderbilt, South Carolina here, and at Florida State. Doesn't get any easier with Auburn coming off the loss. Georgia sitting in pretty in the east. Boy, big opening for Davis. Inside the 45, still fighting, breaks away from the tackle, and look at this. He may score. Finally, he's going to be corralled inside the 20-yard line. And my folks, my friends, 39 yards in the play, and that right there just sums up why LSU is winning this ball game and winning it big tonight. Yep. These kids have really come forth with an effort. They wanted real badly to win this football game. And, Ron, you talked about it second half, the defense being on the field. A lot of missed tackles. And when you get tired, you get lazy. And when you get lazy, you miss tackles. And that's not going to be something that when the coaches, uh, John Thompson, the defensive coordinator, looks at that tape, he's going to grade those guys in on lack of effort. Under 10 minutes to play in the ball game, and flags all over the place. A die had gotten the ball. Boy, that is just really a super effort by Dominic Davis. Start on the part of uh, LSU, Reese Davis. Let's check back with you. Eleven unbeaten teams all survived except Texas and Air Force in a battle with BYU right now. First and goal down three nothing to the Cougars. Chance Harris going to punch that thing in there, and Air Force on top. Mountain West rivals by a count of seven to three. And don't forget, next up for Air Force, Notre Dame next Saturday night on ESPN. The Fighting Irish once again prevail. Their defense carrying the day again. 14-6 over Pittsburgh situation here the last four LSU possessions three touchdowns 20 points and uh, one field goal straight ahead with the carry a die this time goes inside the 15 he's down to the 13 Travis Harris will make the tackle that's a gain of seven almost eight yards this is the best team I've seen in the West LSU uh, by far Here's their schedule. They got South Carolina coming to uh, LSU. Then they go to Auburn and Kentucky back to back. And then they get the uh, Tide at home, Mississippi at home, and at Arkansas. But this team is rolling right now. They got a quarterback that's very confident, an offense that's confident, and a defense that plays hard. And very good in the special teams. Big opening to the left side. A die is going to be tackled. Actually, it closed up the hole quickly. It'll be third down at about six. Scott is there. Talking about the West standings now. LSU sitting in good shape. Ole Miss, five and one overall. David Cutcliffe's team won again today. Auburn, of course, lost a tough game to Arkansas. LSU sitting pretty. Clock runs now under eight minutes to play. LSU driving, it's a third down. They need to take it to the five and a half yard line. Matt Mark. This play right here, Mike talked about it. It's, it's the same thing as a single wing play. They block it well. You can see Peterman was out front blocking on that one. Scott finally made the tackle. Ooh, this is not good news for LSU Tiger fans as Mark comes limping. 
First of all, I wonder why he's in the game. Uh, because it's late in the football game, 7.24 on the clock. And you're ahead 36 to 7. Now, I know he's inexperienced, so, so you want to get him a lot of time, but you also risk an injury. One thing about the SEC, I've noticed this over the years. They play one quarterback and one quarterback only. Uh, that's, the, that's the way it is done by almost every team. And he comes hobbling back out on the field. It is fourth down and short. You need about a foot or so. Here's a look at Marcus Randall, the sophomore out of Baton Rouge. He's the backup. Mock will limp back and hand it off to A. Dye, and A. Dye will have the first down. Dwight Jackson comes up to make the tackle, so a new set of downs, and this is going to take LSU, unless they score on the next couple of plays, this is going to take a, at least another two, two and a half minutes off that clock. And I think they are going to send Randall into the ball game. Yep, here he comes. And listen to the ovation from the LSU faithful as Mock comes off the field. He played a great game. Everything you could ask him to do tonight, he did it. Well, they die their flags down. I thought we had a little move there. Maybe Solomon Lee, the fullback. Maybe Peterman, the left guard, 72. Matt Mock, uh, passing yardage, ran, ran the football. Big play in the second half when he took off for big yardage and got a first down. Scrambled uh, again on the option where he keeps the football, got in the secondary. Touchdown pass to Henderson. And a fired up Matt Mock has had his best day as a quarterback. Battle of two Indiana quarterbacks tonight. He's going to get the victory. Well, this is a die. Nice little quick first step there, and he'll take it back down to the six yard line. Pro Marty will uh, put a stopper on him. That's what everybody said about LSU. They said, well, they lose Rohan Davy, and, and Matt Mock is a uh, tight quarterback and really can't throw, but I think he's answered all the critics tonight. LSU has a very good quarterback passing and running second down it's a die again and then he takes it at the left tackle he'll go to the four Travis Harris sophomore out of Decatur Georgia steps up inside to make the hit And the next minute mark that we will go under is the five minute mark. 5.25.19 and counting. First time since 1986 that the LSU Tigers have come in here to Gainesville and have won. And you're exactly right. Sports Center immediately following this one. A die. He's going to take it down to the two. So it's fourth down and goal. Mike, what do you do that least rubs it in as a head coach? Do you kick the field goal? Do you do you run the play uh, I think you on run, the ground? I think you run the play on the ground. If you score, you score. Tenth play of the drive coming up here. Because there are people who would suggest, well, you're you're trying to, to rub it in, but there's not much else you could do. You no, have two players you, in the ball. Game. If you take a knee, you're embarrassing the other side that way. So yep. you just try to score. Well, it's their job to stop you. Fourth down and goal from the two. He dive. Tries to bounce it outside, but good effort for the defense. He'll stop him at the four-yard line. Mike Mateel. And so the Florida Gators will take it over on downs with 3.59 showing on the clock. 
So we'll take a timeout. 359 left. Tigers 36 to 7. So we are back. And the LSU band striking up uh, those uh, famous strains across the way. Time is back in. A gross one will go from a uh, shotgun formation. A scrimmaging from the four yard line. They roll the pocket under pressure and just throws this one away. Had to get rid of it. Reese Davis, let's check with you. Chance Harris is loose again, Ron, for Air Force against BYU. First and goal play, that Falcon option attack is working. Here comes the talented quarterback knifing in there. Air Force trying to set up that unbeaten showdown with Notre Dame next week. But remember, BYU had a big comeback last week. Right now, the Falcons up 11. You know, the Falcons all have been the comeback kids. <laughs> They have done it more than once this year. Tough to prepare for that wishbone in yeah. one week. Notre Dame will find that out. Pass thrown complete to uh, Aaron Walker. Rob Stone, let's check with you. Well, Ron, a quick update on LSU quarterback Matt Mock. Obviously, his boot is off, taking the tape off there, icing not only his ankle, but also his right foot as well. He's certainly done for the day, but this is pretty much just precautionary. He, he's going to be all right. He's been walking it off. Okay, great. Um, Here's an interesting note. If Florida falls out of the top 25 and after tonight, I'd almost have to think they will. It'll be the first time it's happened since Steve Spurrier's first game in the 1990 season. Willie Green, who's in the ball game at tailback, and the sophomore out of Kissimmee is going to take that out for almost a first down, but not quite. Lejeune making the stop for LSU. The other thing, Ron, when you, or, uh, when you look at this offensive line of Florida, they only play five players. They, they don't have an, enough offensive linemen. They got to play them the whole way. That's right, they don't have a, a lot of reserve. And one of the things, uh, we, I ran into him up in Mobile at a charity event that you were having, and he said at that time, one of his major concerns was the offensive line. Yeah, and it was uh, not in good shape here, offensive line wise. Dumps this out to Willie Green, and Willie's going to take it to the 23 before Brady James will make the tackle. We're about to go into three minutes left to play. Boy, there are not many folks left in this stadium. Now, the LSU fans, not a soul has left. In, uh, in their section. There are the Gator fans. Now you're moving into LSU territory, which is the end zone to our right. And I think everybody with purple and yellow that had a ticket, they are still there. They got a pass of, almost intercepted. Hook I was going to say, Ron, they got a lot of Bob Euchre tickets there in the uh, top section. That happens when you're on the road in a conference game. <laughs> they don't give you the best. Right now, those people don't really care, no, Mike. Uh, this is a this is a really impressive win, and it's a very big momentum win for this football team and a new quarterback. I know he's not totally new, but still, he. I think that's the biggest thing that's going to come out of this game. Matt Bach is an established quarterback for his team. Willie Green on the option play, and Willie. Well, I can't tell from where they have spotted that. I think he might have the first down. Mock after they iced him down on the phone. Have a feeling he's probably talking with uh, Jimbo Fisher right now. Grossman gets this one out. Carlos Perez, and he'll stop the clock with a 2.05 to play. Corey Webster, who had two interceptions on the night, one of those for a touchdown, was the guy who pushed him out. And again, I go back and reiterate, the defense set the tone. They got 10 points off turnovers. And from there on, Florida just uh, could not get back in it. We've seen Rex Grossman when uh, he's been hot as a firecracker. And he started out this football game with two bad throws, interceptions that uh, cost his team. But he didn't get much help. Tater Jacobs gets by one tackler, and he will have the first down up at the 49. Lejeune is there. Taylor Jacobs down, Ron. Looks like he's holding his hand, yeah. 
They cannot afford to lose uh -huh. him. Can't lose him, that's for sure. Training staff is out there quickly, and he'll trot off the field. He'll get a quick look-see at that, get some ice on it, or send him on in. Here's the end of the play. Let's see where he gets hurt. Couldn't tell. Grossman yeah. from shotgun, and they get pressure off the corner. That pass is complete to Perez. Pass complete to Carlos Perez. So the updated numbers on Grossman, 11 touchdowns and yeah. 13 interceptions. That's big right there, but again, there's a lot of things go into an interception. It's, it's maybe the receiver doesn't run the route right, protection, force the ball, quarterback's mistakes, so a lot of things to take into account. Grossman gets this one away, and it's picked off. And that is Corey Webster, his third interception of the night. And you're seeing a frustrated quarterback. He's been frustrated since the first interception. You'd almost tell it with his body language. Tries to go over here and uh, gets it picked off again. Here's so we're back at the, the swamp. The guy's cheered so hard he's cheered the half of the tiger face off his chest. And he'll like that a little later on when, before he has to try to take a shower. The three interceptions by Webster tonight. It ties an LSU single game record. First time since 1978 that that has happened. Chiron Carey in the ball game at tailback and he will get the ball this time. A reminder coming up next to the ESPN, Dan Patrick and Rich Eisen. Florida State, Miami, it was a classic. Wild day in college football and a complete LCS coverage. Sports Center coming up next, immediately following this one. And the clock is running with 42 and now 41 seconds left. Well, the Florida offensive total, the low for the season was 300 yards against Ole Miss and tonight it's 237. And off the top of the telecast, the thing that Mike talked about is number one ranked nationally defense of the LSU Tigers. And I'll tell you what, they have been rugged tonight, and they have shown why they have that very lofty, lofty standing. So the final score, LSU 36 and Florida 7. Coming up next, Sports Center for extended post-game coverage here in Gainesville. Turn over to ESPN News for interviews, commentary, and analysis on LSU's victory. For more, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college football on the Internet. Corey Webster, three interceptions tonight, one for a touchdown. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now, here is Sports Center.